hi this is Sabrina Marie Chase or Sabrina Mari for short today I want to talk about how to recognize a good reader or diviner so there are a fair number of people who come from earth-based spiritual traditions or some kind of pagan or new age background who have a little bit of familiarity with reading or divination often many of these people are familiar with tarot which is where i specialize so what i'd like to do is offer some guidelines about how you can figure out if the person you're working with is a good reader a good diviner even and what that looks like so a good reader or a good diviner will usually start out by telling you very briefly what it is they do by asking you if you have had any experience with this kind of work before and listening as you answer and then maybe asking you to just briefly talk about what you'd like to get out of the session it's very important that your reader or diviner listen to you more than anything first and by listen I don't mean listening for your exact questions uh, for details about your situation many readers and, or diviners prefer not to have that before they start and I'm one of those people I'd rather not know too much before I start but what they really need to know is what is it that you are looking for they want to feel into your need how can they best answer your need a good reader or diviner is also feeling for your alignment with your own highest good and with spirit particularly if that person identifies as a diviner someone who seeks to figure out or uncover divine will your own and the divine will of spirit and to align those things together that person is really going to be listening for how they can help you find your own best alignment with spirit and your own best alignment with the life that you actually want so listening carefully is one characteristic telling you what they're going to do is another characteristic giving you a map of how the session is going to go is very important you're also going to be wanting to look for the quality of their connection to you are they making good eye contact are they prioritizing a sense of what's important to you when they sit down to work I want you to look at their body language do they look rushed do they look nervous do they look like they're not focused on what they're doing those are red flags you want someone who's very very focused very comfortable ideally someone who's done this hundred thousands ten thousand times and really is comfortable in what they're doing when I sit down with a person to work with them I'd like us to feel that we're collaborating that we're working together the ideal that I have in my mind is a collaborative relationship in which we are equal partners in what's happening I may have a specialty that I have honed a tool that I use and a way of helping them align but they and only they are special specialized in their own lives only they know what their lives are really like so we have to work together when I sit down with someone I prefer that they sit next to me or maybe on a couch up behind me because I often like to work on a floor with a special rug out so I have as much room as I need to spread out my cards so I want us both physically and emotionally to collaborate and I'd like us to be spiritually in as much in alignment as possible in order to make this happen I usually start our session with a prayer I'll cross my hands I'll put the first deck or the main deck in my hands and I will ask the person I'm working with to put their hands on top and then I'll say something like we're just gonna be quiet for a minute or I'm just gonna pray for a minute and then I'll close my eyes I will pray for guidance and I'll really feel for that person's energy opening to them reaching out to them at the same time that I connect to spirit and I'm specifically asking to be guided to help this person in the best possible way to tell them what they most need to know in the way that they can best hear it and apply it so a good reader a good diviner is going to try in some ways to do those things with you to align with you physically emotionally and spiritually to call on spirits guidance to ask for help in helping you find your highest good 
A good reader or diviner will also try not to rush you. There may be a limit to how much time they can give you, but they'll try not to rush you. And as you go through the reading together, that person is going to really stop and try to explain each card, each piece, so that you really understand it. A good reader or diviner is going to encourage you to ask different kinds of questions than you might ask on your own. You might come in with a question like, is this job going to work out for me? And your diviner, your reader, might really seek to find an answer for you. But a good reader divine you is going to push you a little harder, push you to ask questions like, what are the kinds of conditions I need to be really happy in my work? What am I meant to do and how can I find that? What's something I could be doing that I'm not doing to bring myself into the job that's really best for me? So a good reader diviner is going to push you to ask questions that give you power. Instead of just telling you what is most likely to happen if you don't do anything different, a good reader or diviner is going to ask you to think about how to move towards what you want and ask you to look for places where you may be making choices that aren't helpful or that are even hurting you. So a good reader or diviner is thinking of the big picture of your best interests as you move forward together. A good reader or diviner is going to have a lot of compassion for you. You might see that person really experiencing emotions as you talk about your pain, and a really good reader or diviner is not going to mind if you start crying. In many of my sessions, people will open and cry, and I'm very comfortable with that. I want them to feel free to experience whatever emotions they have. And I want to be there with them. I usually have some tissues, but they don't have to use those if they don't want to. And usually people will say something like, I, I'm really sorry, I'm sorry I'm crying. And I'll say, it's okay, it doesn't bother me at all. And that is in fact the truth. If you're there to sit with someone and help them find the truths they need to make the decisions that are best for them, then it is absolutely okay if they cry, if they get angry, whatever emotion they have, as long as they're not cruel, mean, or abusive, a good diviner will sit with them in those feelings and encourage them to experience them fully. And as a good reader or diviner gets to the end of a reading, they might encourage you to ask questions like, what else do I need to know? What have I not asked that's important? What am I missing here? So that they can get those last little bits of juice out of the reading for you and really send you away knowing everything that you need. A good reader or diviner is going to stop at the end of the reading and try to summarize for you the big take-home messages of that reading. And a really good reader or diviner will have encouraged you to take good notes or audio tape because a good session could be really long. It's not unusual for my sessions to go to 90 minutes or two hours, and there's no way a person can absorb all the information I have for them. So a good reader or diviner is really going to encourage you, not be afraid of being audio taped, of having you take careful notes. A good reader or diviner is going to ask you, encourage you to go back to those notes, to go back to that recording, to listen again, to look again. And finally, a good reader, a good diviner is going to encourage you not to come back too soon. If the session was good, if you got a lot of take-home actions, that reader is invested in your doing the work that Spirit told you to do. And they're going to know that you can't do that kind of deep work quickly. If your reader or diviner encourages you to come back very quickly, mm, you might want to be a little careful there. There are some very specific conditions when I read for someone where I can say to them, okay, you're at the end of the cycle. This cycle is going to take about six weeks to wrap up, give or take a few weeks. You can come back then if you want. But that only happens in maybe a quarter of the readings I do. Most of the time I tell people, go away and do your work. Listen to the tape. Look at the notes. Don't come back until you've done serious work. Why? Because if a person comes back before they've done the work, guess what the reading is going to say? 
It's going to say a lot of the same things. It's going to tell them to go back and do the same work, maybe with slightly different cards, maybe with the same cards. So if they come back before they've done the work, they're wasting their time. If it's a paid session, they're wasting their money. And they're certainly wasting your time. That's time you could have been using to help someone else. So I hope you can have a sense of the kinds of characteristics that a really good reader, a really good diviner will have. And I ask that you look for those when you work with other people. And if you yourself are a reader or a diviner, I ask you to think, how many of these things do I do right now? Which ones could I perhaps incorporate into my practice so that I can do an even better job for the people that I'm working with? Thank you very much.